If you've always wanted to see Canada's Arctic, one of the easiest ways to do that has been to take the train across the tundra to Churchill, Manitoba. It's a gateway to the north with the feel of a frontier town, rustic, spare, and surrounded by some of the most beautiful scenery our country has to offer. It's autumn, and that means the area's most famous residents are starting to gather just outside town on the shores of Hudson Bay. They're hungry. They haven't eaten much in months. They wait impatiently for the bay to freeze over so they can hunt for seals. But they too are hunted. By tourists. Churchill bills itself as the polar bear capital of the world. And any day now, visitors from as far away as Australia and China will arrive by the thousands, hoping for that once in a lifetime experience but oblivious to the town's current woes. Is this is literally the best place in the world uh, to lock your gaze with a wild polar bear. Uh, a lot of our guests, when they land, they're just absolutely delighted with the culture of Churchill that they find and that they experience. And we stand to lose that culture. We stand to lose that fabric of that community that really uplifts and supports the tourism industry. The reason for his fears, this. Last May, epic floods washed out the train line in 19 places. Most of the region's food and supplies came in on these lines, passengers too. But despite urgent appeals from the community to fix the track, nothing has been done. Nearly five months later, this town is hurting. This is no ordinary train track. It's a lifeline, the very thing that makes life in Churchill reasonable, even possible. For the past 20 years, this link to Canada's only deep water Arctic port has been in the hands of an American company. But now it's no secret that company wants out. And while politicians and bureaucrats argue with the company over who should pay for repairs, people here feel as if they're being held hostage. There's not a person or business in this town that hasn't been hit and hard by the loss of the train. Rhoda DeMills and her husband own the Churchill Home Building Center. They employed eight people before the flood. Now they're down to three, the rest laid off. Broke our hearts doing that, but didn't have a choice. Yeah. But we're down 95% of our sales this year. 95%? 95% because we do so much in the north. And because there's no rail, there's no contract work going on in town, there's not very much going on. So nobody's really spending money. And everybody's scared because they don't know if they're going to have a job tomorrow, so nobody wants to spend money. Her husband, Dale, handles the lumber yard out back. They used to ship as many as 200 crates of wood to Arctic hamlets, bringing it up from Winnipeg by train and then shipping it to northern communities. The DeMills estimate they've lost a half million dollars in business resupplying the north. The supplies they do bring in now come from Montreal by ship. So we ended up giving Montreal our money instead of Winnipeg, who we always deal with, or Manitoba. So I had to give my money out of state. You know what I mean? Out of province. Out of province, yeah. And that, that hurt big time. We had a hard time with that. People up here are used to paying more for groceries than they would down south. It's part of living in the north. But not like this. Everything in this store now comes by plane or ship. $21 for a bag of potatoes. $37 for toilet paper. $17 for a jar of cheese Whiz. Some products, like milk, are subsidized by government, but families are struggling. So is it cheaper for these families to move out and live down south, where they can get a jug of milk for $5 instead of paying $12? Like, people need to work. You know, your, your unemployment insurance only lasts so long. Hey, supper time! Everyone in town knows Dave Daly. Are you hungry? He's lived here his whole life. 
Sure, he's head of the Chamber of Commerce, he owns a small hotel, but his real love, his passion, is these guys. Hey, you, up there. Get. These are sled dogs. It used to cost him $800 to bring in a six-week supply of food for them by train. Now it comes by plane at a cost of $4,500. Good? You think good? You, you get mad and then you get depressed and then you get, you know, and then you get sad and then you get, and, that, and I think people are getting mad again. You know, like the, enough's enough's already. You know, let's, uh, we're, we're pawns in a bigger game. Daly takes tourists on dog sled trips all year round. The bear season tourists come mostly by plane, but summer customers often come by rail. He lost 80% of his summer business this year. But what bothers him most is that Churchill doesn't seem to matter anymore. All through history, Churchill's been very instrumental in, in, in this whole country. Back in the 1700s, 1600s, they built the Fort Prince of Wales here. You know, that started the fur trade. Then in the Cold War days, Churchill was a strategic uh, uh, place. There was uh, 7,000 people that lived here. The Navy was here, the Army was here, the Air Force was here. I think uh, National Geographic, we were one of the top 100 destinations to see before you die in, 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 in their magazine. When did we become so unimportant when it, when, when it comes to, 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 to our rail line? Back in the late 1920s, there were many who thought it was crazy to build a train track on Muskeg. But build they did, not just a rail line, but a port as well. Grain shipments began in 1931. And by the 50s, tons of grain was shipped out of this port and around the world. But by the 60s, there were already signs of trouble. Grain shipments just weren't as strong as expected. And then the military left town, taking all their business with them. Suddenly, those bears, that had been mostly a nuisance till now, began to look like an opportunity. A small one, at first. Frontier's North President, John Gunter. What had happened out on the tundra, and guests would come and go, and it really wasn't a huge deal back in the early 80s. It, it really started taking off in the 90s is when things with the polar bear tourism really ramped up. Bear season is only about six weeks long, but it was to become a vital source of income for this town. And in the summer, the town added beluga whale watching trips to its offerings. Adapting to change and chance is what this town does best, says Mayor Michael Spence. I think we just you know, we just fluked it in some ways, I guess. If, uh, if the military presence was still here, you wouldn't be recognized as a polar bear capital of the world or fast becoming the, the beluga whale capital of the world. As essential as the train was for Churchill, it just wasn't a moneymaker for CN. And so, in 1997, the Liberal government sold the line and the port to Omnitrax, a huge American company based in Denver. Oh, there were high hopes. And we feel there's lots of other products could be marketed through Churchill, uh, lumber products, perhaps potash. Uh, really, it's limited only to your imagination what uh, the future might hold. But even back then, the idea of selling a part of Canada's railway to a U.S. company just didn't sit right with a lot of the town. Because they're American, they take all their money home. We're Canadians. We want our money to stay here. And despite all those great plans, the line never made money for Omnitrax. Over the years, the federal and provincial governments sank millions into subsidies, but it was never enough. Mayor Spence says repairs on the line began to slip. You know, there was some good years there, but over time, I think what happens is that um, you tend to not reinvest the monies back in. By not reinvesting back in, just over time, your infrastructure starts to fall apart. And so that money was not being reinvested? It wasn't, it wasn't being it, it reinvested. Was, it was heading... It was heading to Denver. After the wheat board shut down in 2012, grain shipments to the port dropped off. Four years later, Omnitrax shut down the port. As many as 100 people lost their jobs, a devastating loss to the town, and locals were bitter. 
it's 20 years later and there's nothing left. There's no jobs, there's, you know, all we have left is tourism. The washout of the line this spring seems to have been the final straw for Omnitrax. They said it was an act of God and they wouldn't pay for repairs. Not so fast, said the Prime Minister. Omnitrax uh, has legal obligations to clean up uh, and to repair uh, the tracks. Uh, that is something that we are very serious about making sure that Omnitrax lives up to. But despite the saber rattling by the Prime Minister and others, no deal has been reached. Come on, let's go, let's go. The mayor's not waiting, though. On, He's go. been working behind the scenes to put together a group of would be buyers for the line. They've joined forces with a First Nations group, and they're ready to put the line back in Canadian hands if they're given the chance. They strongly believe that we can, we can make a difference with a different model, and, and that's what we're prepared to do. But we got to get there, right? Uh, we need to get there, and time is not on our side for this year. It may be too late to fix the line before winter, and that means another six months of hardship. Just a few days ago, this stack of train tracks arrived in town. They'll be laid down so that the train can be put on a barge and taken out for the winter. If that happens, Dave Daly says he and some of the townspeople plan to give the train's owners a taste of their own medicine. Between the Transport Canada, the federal government and Omnitrax, it's like we're being held hostage here. Well then why don't we keep your train and keep your train hostage? You know, you're keeping us hostage. So that's our next step. You know, you, you want to hold us hostage? Well, maybe we'll hold you hostage. This is a town of fighters, of survivors, people called upon over the decades, even centuries, to endure, to adapt. The North may be part of Canada's identity, but it's people like these who keep that identity alive for us. This is our home, and we want to be here and we want to stay here. We love it here, this is home. So nobody should take that away from us. Arctic sovereignty, is that a Canada issue or is that an issue for uh, 800 people in a community like Churchill? This isn't just a rail line. This is our north, our north. Duncan McHugh, CBC News, Churchill, Manitoba.